Hi, welcome back to My Biggest Regret, hosted by yours truly, God's least favorite individual. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to go from ethical to ethical. Let's get to it. So, as a foremost authority on right and wrong, I think it's perfectly apt for me to give a brief introduction to morality, what we define it as, and how we draw those boundaries. Firstly, what are morals? Well, in layman's terms, they're the principles of right and wrong. What does it actually mean? Well, it's simple. Nobody knows. Yes, that's right. The deciding factor on whether you get to fly with angels or spend an eternity burning in hell like a bag of microwave popcorn is a mystery. But we humans try our best to theorize about what we think is right and what we think is wrong, and then do as little of the wrong as possible. This theorizing is essentially the core principle behind moral philosophy. People spend their entire lives trying to unravel the mysteries of what makes something right and wrong, and it's an incredibly complex subject. And as a computer scientist, you face a very own set of problems, like piracy, hacking, and data privacy. One of the most frequently discussed areas of computer morality is hacking, with questions such as when is it okay, why do people do it, and is the law the moral authority on whether it's right or wrong. Let's begin by looking at the Computer Misuse Act of 1990. Wonderful. Now, for those of you that are slow at reading, I'll summarise. The Computer Misuse Act was introduced to prevent data misuse, what the cool kids call hacking, and has three primary clauses. Firstly, the Act prohibits unauthorised access to any data or program. Secondly, it makes it illegal to use any data obtained with intent to deceive, commit fraud, or just copyright infringement or anything like that. And finally, the Act prohibits the unlawful modification of data or unauthorized modification of data. And this extends to things like malware, spyware, or anything which just maliciously changes data in the system. But what does moral philosophy tell us about hacking? Well, if we look at the work of Immanuel Kant, the Giga Chad of moral philosophy, he believed that an action is not defined as good or bad by its consequences, but rather the motives of the actor. In that case, in and of itself, hacking isn't a bad thing. It's rather the person doing it who makes it a bad or good action. And with that in mind, we'll move on to our next topic, the types of hacker. The most commonly recognized type of hacker is what most would refer to as a black hat hacker. These are individuals that commit data misuse acts for personal gain. You know the ones sitting in dark rooms wearing ski masks and like slamming on a glowing blue keyboard and saying the phrase, I am in more than they leave the house. Another commonly known type of hacker is a white hat hacker. These hackers are often hired by companies to try and expose flaws and vulnerabilities in their security systems and so that they find it rather than someone malicious like a black hat. Finally, there are grey hat hackers and as the name would suggest, they're a mixture of the two. Like a white hat hacker, they generally act for morally altruistic reasons. However, like a black attack hacker, they act mm, a bit outside of the law, often overtly outside of the law. So as you can see, what differentiates hackers is not just purely the legality of their actions, but rather their motives. However, most people have very little interaction with hacking throughout their lifetime. Almost the opposite can be said of piracy, though. Piracy is one of the most common crimes in the world, with over 109 billion piracy site visits in the last year alone. Well, what is piracy then? We typically define it as the unauthorized use of software, videos, and most commonly, music. The piracy boom began in the early 2000s with the advent of MP3 sharing, with sites like BitTorrent, LimeWire, and Pirate Bay. Many believe that piracy is a victimless crime, meaning that because there's no physical products involved and no one has to put together each one, no one is being harmed in the process of taking it, as it's easy to just for them to produce another thing. It's not a material object being taken. Others say that piracy is okay because companies are exploitative, or they think it's too expensive, or that they don't like all the updates, and things like that. However, others argue that since creating a product involves labor, that labor has to be compensated, otherwise it's exploitative. In conclusion, Morality is a largely subjective field which can take years to decipher what's right and wrong, and often with no clear answer. However, you as a computer scientist didn't become a computer scientist to become a moral philosopher. You don't have time to be defining where your moral boundaries are and what you define personally as right and wrong. 
So, is there a set of predefined moral guidelines for how we should act as a computer science? I'm glad you asked because there is, of course there is, the internet. But more importantly, these are published by the British Computing Society and they instruct you on how to act ethically. One, always act within the public interest. Don't go and start hacking just for your own personal gain, effectively. Two, you should have a sense of duty towards the organisation you're working for. No apathy here, thank you. Three, you should feel a sense of duty to the profession and a will to maintain the integrity of it. So, no one who's very happy to take a million dollars and then run away from their job. And four, maintain a sense of competence and integrity. Basically, be good at your job and be a good person. Of course, these rules are somewhat vague and definitely more guidelines than strict rules, but it gets the idea across. That just about wraps things up. Thank you for watching, enjoy the apocalypse, and make sure you stay at home. Bye.